welcome to Los Angeles and welcome to Freeze LA. And the reason why we're here today is because of this car right behind me. But of course, to learn more about this new project, I have here with me Stella Clark, R&D engineer at BMW in Munich. And of course, you might remember Stella from the BMW iX Flow, Vision D, and I'm assuming some other cars coming out in the future, but that's <laughs> beside the point. As always, great to see you, Stella. Great to see you, Horatio. So tell me what we have here, right? So this is the yeah. BMW i5 Flow Nostakana. Exactly. And before we get into the tech, Tell me the story behind the car. There is a long story behind the car, but to keep it short, this car is an homage to the artist Esther Malangu, okay. who painted the 12th art car from BMW. And her original name is Nostokana. It comes from, it, from her uh, Nebel culture. It's mm -hmm. normal for a woman to be named after her first son. Yeah. And in her case, her first son was called Stokana. And so Nostokana is like the mother of the first son. And we thought it would be nice to pay an homage to her using her real first name before uh, the apartheid uh, meant that uh, Latin names needed to be adopted. Gotcha. So how did this project come to life? Did you travel to South Africa? Yeah. Did you have a chance to meet Aster? Yeah. How did that interaction go? And tell me more about the story. Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. So yes, I did get to meet her. And yes, we interacted. And yeah. to make the story from the very beginning, so six years ago, when the first ideas of using color change in a car were mm -hmm in the head, uh, her, she inspired me. So yep. um, really in the very first pitch deck, before there was even any kind of prototype, her art was inspirational and led to people understanding what I wanted to do with e-ink on the car. Mm -hmm. So meeting her was quite surreal. We met twice. We met once okay. close to Johannesburg by our homestead to show her our design recommendation for the car. It's mm -hmm. important to us that we don't just steal it, uh, an artist's you know, design. And yeah. uh, but so she ha needed to approve it and be happy with it. And the second time was uh, after the car was finished, uh, showing her the final product. Gotcha. So now let's dive into the car. So this is yeah. the e-ink technology. Yeah. As we said, we're sitting on the iX Flow, we're sitting on the Vision D. But tell me how this technology changed compared to the first product that we've seen, I don't know, three, four yeah. years ago maybe? Yeah, yeah. Well, it feels like that, but it was yeah. a little over two years ago. Two we years came ago. out okay. with the iX Flow. Okay. A lot has happened. Okay. So to make the evolution of this clear, the iX Flow was black and white and had 60 segments that could be individually controlled. 67. The Vision D was full color, 32 colors, and had 240 segments that could be individually controlled. You're leading me somewhere. You're leading me here, so wait for it. <laughs> this car has 1,349 segments mm. and is full color. So in terms of... Quite a lot. It's a lot. It's a big difference and yeah. technically it's a big challenge and it meant that we had to rethink how we technically implemented the technology. So to be mm -hmm. honest, so far with the BMW iVision uh, D and even before that the iX Flow, we were working with raw material from e-ink. We were given e-ink and we pretty much cut it in a very prototype way to put it on the car. And now it's not just cutting of a prototype but really a pre-planned method of making larger panels to get onto the car and the solution that we see here is one that has a degree of robustness and also has a degree of a technical solution that you could see in an actual car. Sure. I mean, let's take a look from the yeah. side because I guess it's a lot more you know visual here yes. uh, especially with the color changing but yeah are these the largest panels you've done so far are they even larger than on the Vision D? They are definitely larger than the Vision D. Okay. They're not necessarily larger than the iX Flow because the iX Flow we were working with roll material. We had the 60 centimeters, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. that those were perhaps on the roof of the iX Flow were the largest we've ever done before, but certainly larger than D. Yeah. Gotcha. And wheels, same technology, I guess. There. Yeah. Yeah. So wheel the wheel technology here is also kind of the segmented, uh, kind of more further developed use of e-ink that's also on the bodies mm -hmm. getting power to the wheels now is not over a battery but it's over contact rings so also more robustness in there as well you know from a tech perspective was it a lot more difficult to achieve the colors on the car yep. compared to vision d once again i'm bringing back vision yes. d because we've seen color there for the first time yep. but it seems to be a little bit more interactive and a little bit different as well yes yes so the color changing layer itself is the same as on the Vision D, but okay. everything that's underneath that is new here, and that makes all the difference here. So 
as you see, we have a, an awful lot of segments and the ability to animate those individually means you can bring really complex patterns mm -hmm. um, into it. And the fact that it has a degree of robustness, especially against climatic conditions, also means that the colors look particularly beautiful and bright and bold. Mm -hmm. yep. Did you have a chance to show the car to the artist, to Esther? Yeah, yeah, she hasn't seen it. What was her reaction? It. Uh, she really liked it. Yeah. She really liked it. So on both uh, occasions, both looking at the design and approving the design and looking at the final product, uh, she said uh, in her language, uh, I love it. Mm -hmm. And she does speak her mind, so okay. we are very thankful for this right. comment. And maybe you can tell me why the i5? Why not a different product? Why did you pick the i5 to yes. represent her work, basically? Yes. Uh, I, it's an electrical car, uh, so far all our EE cars have been electrical cars, that okay. does fit in very well with the technology itself. The 5, because the original car that Esso Malangu painted was also a 5 series and we are definitely an homage to her art. Yeah, I think we have it right there, so yeah, it's very cool to have that one here. I actually yeah. see the car in real life, I was in South Africa recently, I had a chance to see the car. Yes. And it's spectacular. I've also yes. seen some of her other work with some 7 series or a collaboration on the 7 series, for example, but it looks spectacular. Well, the interesting thing is, this 7 series, she painted the interior dashboard of it. Yes, And yes. there's one photo one of her saw. sitting... Yeah looking at her dashboard mm -hmm. with a huge smile on her face yeah. and that was the photo that I used in my original pitch deck to try and get e-ink in the car. So that photo is worth a lot to me and just the fact that we're working yeah. together with her is quite a dream. What's Ooh. next for you without revealing any secrets or anything yeah, like that? Like, what yeah. would you like to see in the future from this technology? Let's just put it mm -hmm. that way. Something well, that excites you because we've talked about the graphics like on the car yeah. showing the battery levels yeah, and all yeah. that which is cool. It's very yeah practical and functional yeah. but maybe from a more artistry or an artist perspective yeah. like what would you yeah. like to see maybe yeah well it's not only about what i like to see it's what people want to see uh, true, right exactly. and so what true. we've learned so far with time is that people are not so for the functional use cases of e-ink mm -hmm. you know showing information perhaps controlling light reflectivity and thermal properties mm -hmm. that doesn't get people really smiling what people love to see is you know rims changing racing stripes kind of mm -hmm expressing themselves with their car and you know the big hit is people matching their clothes mm -hmm. they love that and so we've realized with time that this is a this is a technology that brings joy to cars it's not something that you know has to make sense it has to have a functionality it's something just makes people happy and brings smiles to their mm -hmm. face so that's one part of the question and in terms of where it's going i think if we take this car and extrapolate it into the future really take the progress we've done so far and extrapolate it then that hints at where it's going to be more concrete there we have some robustness here. It's the first car where we have a certain amount of climatic robustness. Extrapolate that into the future, and you can see that we're working on robustness. Okay. Uh, and the second one is where um, we're pushing the innovation barrier here even further. This is 1,349 segments. It's easy to say, but it's really hard to do. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we also love pushing the ba innovation barrier even more. I don't rule that sure. out. Are, are we going to move inside with that technology at some point? Like, is there a vision to do something inside the car? Because so far we've seen exterior yeah, representations yeah. of the car. Yes. But I'm assuming there are applications that could be interesting yeah. inside the car as well. For sure, for sure. And the first ideas were in the car interior. It really was this dashboard picture of Esther Malangu okay. uh, that triggered my first prototype sure. with e-ink. The thing with the interior of the car is, um, there's also displays in the interior, mm -hmm. and the displays in the interior, there's no regulation against you know patching them everywhere. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the exterior of the car, it's a safety function. Yeah. And so you can't just light up the whole exterior of a car, it's too mm -hmm. distracting. There's yeah. rules and regulations, depending on country, against this, whereas color change is more subtle. Mm -hmm. It's tendentially sure. more allowed in various countries than you know, light. And yeah. the feedback from our cars until now have shown there, there really seems to be a thing for exterior color change. It seems mm -hmm. to be something that sure. people like. Yeah. Okay, let's move one more time around the sure. car. We see from that angle, yeah. and maybe like that. And I'm going to ask you a technical question yeah. also, yeah. because I just realized that we should have started with that, honestly. Yeah. Maybe a lot of people have not seen the initial cars and they don't understand how the technology works. Yeah. I've heard people here earlier today yeah. asking you, yeah. is there a battery connected to this? You know, yeah. how does it work? So maybe we explain that one more time to people how the yeah. e-ink technology really works. Sure. So in a nutshell, e-ink is pretty much, if you hold it in your hands, it's kind of like a thick cardboardy material, but mm -hmm. there's layers inside it. The very middle layer of it contains multiple transparent capsules and they're really small and they, they contain color particles. In this case, we have CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, mm -hmm. and white. 
and these particles react to light electrical fields that are applied to electrode layers on top and the bottom of it and mm -hmm. you know the, the color particles move around and the color particle mixture that comes to the surface is then the color of the surface yeah i mean you, you can see from this angle honestly uh, it is it is quite cool i'm assuming at night time it looks fantastic i mean it's so yeah. bright in here but i'm assuming when it's dark yeah, it will yeah, look fantastic yeah. it has a different kind of a feeling at night time it's certainly more subtle right so yeah. it's color change it's not light so i think it looks best like in bright sunlight really? yeah, so yeah, yeah. Ah, interesting bright sunlight, i gotta wait till it's dark here tonight to see dark, if yeah. you're right or not i think i'm right but <laughs> yes there was one scene when we were showing the ix flow at ces the yeah. the car was pulsing once and it yeah. was not complete darkness but yeah. it was just you know like kind of moonlight yeah. and it kind of felt and looked like an, a, a, an animal that was breathing. So yeah. the nighttime with color change can also have a lovely effect. So I have a bit of an OCD with symmetry and round numbers and all of that. Why 1349 and not yeah. 1350? <laughs> because, uh, no, that's because we designed it to respect the original art oh, car. Okay. Uh, we didn't design it to reach a nice number. We might keep that in mind yeah. for the next car for you. <laughs> we'll it just sounds so much better. Yeah. 1350. Yeah, you know, no, that's 1500, true. 1500. Should we just add more panels no, to it? Fair point. But I get it. You fair know, point. It's all about the art. It's not about <laughs> yeah. us, really. Next time, Horatio. Well, Stella, next, thanks yeah. once again. Thank I'm sure you, we'll see each other in the yeah. future. So, nice, as always, nice. I can't wait to see you next time. I see what else you're cooking in your little lab there. Yeah, because I've seen it. It's quite cool, actually. So Thank you so much, Horatio. Well, guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't seen the other videos, I'll make sure to leave that in the description because we've done quite a few with Stella and we even went to the secret lab there. So there's a lot to learn about this technology. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.